bunch of double bonds. Yes. So if we follow the arrows, the oxygen is losing its pi bond to form the bond of the hydrogen. The beta carbon and the gamma carbon are forming a double bond. Now, the most important thing is to notice that the alpha carbon and the beta carbon are completely detaching from each other. That's why this is a fragmentation pattern. We started with one molecule, but now we have two fragments because we're breaking the alpha-beta bond. Where did those electrons go to that used to be in the alpha-beta bond? Well, they formed a new pi bond between the alpha carbon and the former carbonyl carbon. So we basically end up with an enol type arrangement here. And it turns out, according to the textbook, that it's the enol that gets the positive charge in the radical. Yeah, and the other compound is just neutral. And for the other one, it would look different because. Oh, you already did the other one? Yeah, good. So now let's make sure we can draw the other one. And how do you do it using mass spec? You so this is mass spec. I know, but then you see the masses of each of these. Well, yeah, there's different products, I guess. So like you would use like you'd look for the mass. Right. Now, which of the fragments that are going to show up on mass spec? The ones with the oh. radical cations. So we look for these. Well, which of these is heavier? The this left hand one is heavier, right? It's got an extra carbon. So we can use our calculator to calculate the exact masses of these. Um, but this is clearly going to be heavier, so if we see a absorption that's got the right mass for this radical cation, that tells us we started with this compound. Whereas if we see an absorption that's got the smaller mass for this uh, radical cation, then we know we started with this compound. So the McLafferty rearrangement is real helpful to us here. So the key thing is the McLafferty rearrangement is when the carbonyl oxygen uses its pi bond to steal the gamma hydrogen. The carbonyl oxygen uses its pi bond to steal the gamma hydrogen, and that sets off a chain reaction of two other arrows. We form a new pi bond between the beta carbon and the gamma carbon, and we form a new pi bond between the alpha carbon and the former carbonyl carbon. There's two options of gammas, which one is that? If there's two gamma carbons? Yeah. Now, in this case, it didn't matter because they were symmetric, but I suppose if there was two of them, then you would get a mixture. You would see, you would see the McLafferty rearrangement go both ways. You would see absorptions that represent um, both different types of McLafferty rearrangements. A big mistake here is for people just to take the proton from the wrong carbon. So we don't want to be lazy. We should always label the alpha, beta, and gamma carbons so we know that we're taking it from the right carbon. OK, we're looking at the next one? Mm -hmm. All right, so that was 2-ethyl cyclohexanone.